Well, this week we continue our series, like he said, His and Hers. And for those of you um, coming for the first time, each week we will um, be sharing healthy principles or f of a healthy relationship. So how to have a healthy relationship. Um, these principles are for you. So wink, wink, don't be, you know, doing one of these. This is for you kind of thing. You know, we encourage you to look inside yourself, right? Um, we improve ourselves first. We started last week talking about um, the speck in our own eye and not trying to remove the log out of our partner's eye, right? And the so reason why is... we do that, sorry, honey, I don't mean to cut you off. <laughs> we don't want any fights in the car <laughs> when you go home, okay? The month of February was awful. We would fight every day. He no, was this talking is you. about you. <laughs> that was you right there. So this is for you and uh, for your, you know, to look inside. And then this is, um, oh, and, and throughout the relationship series, both JD and I will be sharing his and her perspective or even just giving, you know, parts of the message him and, and I. So we're just going to be tag teaming it this month. Cool? Boom. That's Go on, right. babe. Go on, babe. So we're going to start uh, this second installment of uh, his and hers uh, with a passage found in 1 John 3.18. It's a short passage but very poignant and uh, powerful it says little children let us not love in word or in talk but in deed and in truth and we have titled this series this uh, message today more than words had a different idea we thought about put a sock in it but felt a little aggressive so we're titling it more than words right <laughs> we're talking about communication uh, last week, we started the series by saying that every serious and healthy relationship stands on the foundation of mutual respect and mutual responsibility because it's important for the, both members in the relationship to understand that each of them is an individual, an individual with talents, an individual with abilities, but also with faults. So we got to give grace and, and you have to have, give room for uh, those faults and for that person's individuality. But the, the key here is not individualism. The key here is not, uh, 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 you know, independence. The key here is mutuality. It's learning how to live as one even though you are two uh, persons. So mutuality is, cru is crucial because it validates both persons as you are committed uh, to walking in the same direction if without mutuality you're either pushing away or you're pulling away because there's no balance uh, you think that you're pulling away uh, you think that you're you're uh, uh, embracing the other person but you're really pushing away and sometimes you you don't know how to ask for space you don't know how to voice you know listen this is not really the way I think or this is not really the way uh, I want to do this so you, you you pull away from the person uh, who you are in relationship with so uh, if you want the that depth and we're talking about you know committed relationships if you want the depth in, in your marriage uh, you need to understand this and this is really important marriage is a discipline marriage is a discipline we see marriage as an institution we see marriage as an entity but more than that marriage is a discipline and there are some two-hour movies and 22-minute sitcoms episodes that might protest to that idea. But then again, they are over in 22 minutes. And your marriage is not. Right? What happens is that there are also a lot of fictional relationships where everything works when, it's, when people are watching. Right? Everything works when, when, when you are in public. But our interest today and our encouragement today and, and what we want to inspire you toward today with this message is for things to be good when behind the closed doors. It's for things to, to work well when it's just the two of you. It's for you to look out into the distance and plan your life with your partner or with your, with your husband or wife uh, in a way that is, you know, long term. That it's forever indeed. So if you want depth in marriage, you got to understand that marriage is a discipline. There's no magic ink on that marriage license that automatically makes you a good husband. There's no magic ink in that, in that marriage license that automatically makes you a good wife. Just like having a gym membership doesn't make you buff. You have to put in the work. You got to go to the gym and actually pump some iron, all right? 
it, it, signing on the marriage license doesn't make you a good husband or a good wife. There's no marriage autopilot in life. And this is daily. We have to put in the effort and the investment daily. We have to make an effort daily into who we are and the kind of person we want to be, but also the kind of relationship we want to lead. See, we feed our bodies daily, multiple times. We feed our cats, our dogs, our parakeets. We feed everybody. But sometimes we spend a whole day without feeding our relationship. Because we're too tired, too busy, too this, too that. And so we have to have that mindset that this is a daily effort. You know, uh, 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 you, you got to do that. And uh, that, the, 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 the element that is essential for it is, is that you may have a vision, is that, is that you have a vision for your relationship. When I was 16 years old, some of you are single, you're not there yet. Some of you might not want to be there. But I was 16 years old, I was praying for my wife. I was asking God to bless her. I was asking God to, to form me and shape me, you know. And uh, Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, you felt those prayers, right, babe? Uh, she wasn't even in my, I knew her, but she wasn't really part of my life yet. I didn't know who was going to be my wife. And uh, the last person I thought would be my wife is somebody living in Connecticut. I wasn't leave, even living in this country. But, you know, God knew. So, but this, this vision and planning continues on. When we met and we decided to get married, we, de we developed a vision for our, our marriage. You know, we said, you know what? We want to be in for the long term. We don't want, when we have kids, we don't want the stress and the busyness of raising kids, taking them to school and classes and things, to create a distance and a gap between us. So what's the goal? The goal is to stay together forever, so let's put in parameters so that uh, uh, can work, so, so that when the kids move out, we're still us. You know, so we decided to do that and to work at it together because marriage is a mutual decision. It's a mutual commitment. And it's discipline. Right, love? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I want to address the singles in the room because I know you're going, okay, this is a relationship series, so this is about the married folks. And it's not. Because just like he said, um, you know, he started praying when he was 16. And if I'm being honest, I don't know what I was doing when I was 16. But I do remember that at 18, the you Lord... You were dreaming of me. Yes. Um, but I do remember when I was 18 coming back to God, right? And uh, how many prayers maybe was, was investment into my life, mm -hmm. right? We don't know. So for the singles in the room, please don't tune out as we say husband, wife, you know, relationship, family. I want to encourage you to take these principles and begin to apply them to your life. Because you want two healthy individuals. The whole law that says, you know, 50-50, I complete you and the Jerry Maguire stuff, that's not real. You don't come into a marriage as a 50 individual and expect the other person to make your 100. You need two 100s to make one full 100. Yeah. Okay, can I say two that? Holes make a hole. Two holes make a hole. Yeah. Right? It's not the halves. And so as you're hearing these things and as we're sharing, we want, we're laying foundation for you. We're telling you out of 16 years of our experience, 16 and the 16th, guys, 16 years of marriage. Coming up this week. Yes. Um, out of our foundation, out of the things that we have learned, we're giving you pointers on how to, you know, create a solid foundation. And let me encourage you singles in the room, if you're in a relationship that is not leading towards marriage, you're wasting your time. It is pointless and it is a waste of time, I'm telling you right now. So relationships, that kind of relationship, I mean, you can be friends with thousands of people, hang out, have friends, but relationships are for the next level. Those kinds of, you know, um, relationship the, the the coming to uh, is for the next level should be leaning towards marriage so don't engage in pointless relationships can i just say that it's a waste of time anyway there are two important reasons uh, for you here in during this series is we're building a solid foundation of the kind of relationship you want right so if you look at couples and you go i want that kind of relationship that kind of healthy relationship well you need to start working on yourself to make sure you're healthy and you're laying solid foundations right and the next point is uh, when you meet someone you'll be able to assess 
compatibility. You'll be able to look at them and go, wait, this is the kind of stuff, you know, that I, I'm looking for. I'm looking for a, a, a man or a woman who loves God. I'm looking for people who treat other people this certain way. You know out of your, of, you know, out of what we're sharing here, what you are already looking for so that you don't waste time, so that you don't get into heartache, so that you, you can um, stay away from certain relationships that are no good for you. Um, so if you are in the room, I also want to address this. If you're in this room and you don't want to get married, that is okay too. That is great too. Because Paul encourages us that if you, uh, so people that don't want to, that, you know, rather not get married, that don't want to get married, that that is a good thing. Because you can apply your time to the things of the Lord and you can apply your time to building the kingdom and you can apply your time in, you know, into investment into the things of, of God. So that is also a great place to be. Please feel no pressure that I should be getting married or I should be getting in a relationship or I should. There is no should. You lead the life that God is calling you to lead and if that's singlehood that is great as well okay you wanted to say that um we will uh so nothing we talk about today is wasted and again the most fundamental element that enables becoming one as we have said is you know promoting and promotes mutuality today which we'll discuss further is communication anybody say communication that's everything guys so we're going to start with communication pitfalls, right? I like to call it the crazy cycle. Um, so, ladies. Ladies. Can I hear? Hey, hey. Now, you know, let's be honest, that we are always right. We are never exaggerate. <laughs> right, ladies? Never. Of course, I mean cheeky. But here's a tendency that we women, okay, now I'm going to talk to the women specifically. We have a tendency to exaggerate, right? We have a tendency to look and make general statements like, you always forget to put the shoes away. You always do this or the other. You never remember what I ask you. You never listen, right? We have a tendency to make general statements like that. Very large general statements and absolute statements. And what happens is we leave no room for discussion. We just want to be right. And the tendency is to escalate. When we, when, we make, when we use terms like always and never and so, you know, definitive terms, the tendency is to escalate the emotion, right? We're not trying to have a conversation. We're escalating feelings on both sides. And these statements tend to be accusatory, accusatory. I can say that word, accusatory. Um, we, we have to become aware of communication. We have to become aware of how we're saying things and how and what we're saying. And um, if we are not, if we're not careful, if we're not aware, we create the cycle of blaming and defending. So this is what I call the crazy cycle, right? We blame and he defends. We blame and he defends. And it, this keeps going in circle. And nobody wins in that crazy cycle because you're always going to find something to blame and he's going to find a way to defend and it's an attack on both parties. And I'll give you an example. So like the husband arrives home from work, and this is because I'm talking to the ladies. The husband arrives home from work and uh, he He's late and you look at him and, and say, you're never here. You never, you never want to see me anymore. And he looks at her like, whoa, woman. How do you expect me to put food on the table? I'm just trying to work. You know, I'm just trying to bring food. And you, and you turn and again, another, another exaggeration. You always put your job first. And then he looks at you and says, I could never make you happy. No matter what I do, I'm never, I'm never make you happy. You see how it's kind of crazy? Because you don't, it doesn't lead anywhere. It's like it's, it's accusing and it's defending. And it's accusing and defending. And at the end, it's just blames and accusations and it leads to anger and resentment. And that's a pitfall in communication. Another thing that I find often with women, and this is just conversations I've had, is that we women like, to, like for them to know what we're thinking. What do you mean? Like you should know. What do you want to eat, babe? Don't you know? <laughs> no, you change your mind every day. <laughs> like, you know, we, we are not very clear and we're not very specific with our wants and our feelings and our needs. We want our partner to just know. And it doesn't work that way. They, number one, they are different. 
right? We're spaghettis, right? And they're waffles, little boxes, right? Ever had a conversation? You know, you could be thinking, all of a sudden, he's like, how did you get, I have, I have this, how did you get there, dude? It went from here to here to here to here, and then I arrived, you know. We're spaghetti. We can think about different things all the time, and everything connects where guys, they are able to compartmentalize. And so they're waffles, and we... Instead of actually telling our partners, like in that scenario, instead of saying, hey, babe, I miss you. I feel like we don't see each other anymore. I feel kind of distant. Can we have a date night? Could have just said that when he walked home. He was home. He was late. Hey, I miss you. Can we have, like, a date night? No, you said, you're never here. You see how communication has, can have a, like, you can mean the same thing. She could have just meant, hey, I miss you. Like, I feel like you're not, not around, right? You can say that in a better way or you can actually express what's going on without the judgment, without the, the, the kind of, it's like accusing the motive. You go after his motive instead of actually saying what's going on inside you, right? You have to be able to know that whatever's going on inside you does not mean that his motives are wrong, okay? So we, when in communication, motives Make, make a difference. And yeah. we'll address that. But motives make a difference. Now, fellas, or as she put it, waffles. <laughs> uh, when it comes to communication pitfalls, you know, we, we can hang with each other. But, uh, you know, she, she just brought something up that, that's really, uh, uh, it, 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 on your side, it works a little bit differently, right? Because if you found a woman who is kind enough to put up with you because uh, let's be honest you know we believe what the scripture says that we are all fearfully and wonderfully made every single one of us but they're more wonderfully made than us and we're probably more fearfully made <laughs> than they are so uh, when you when you do find someone that uh, is, you know, willing to give you your heart, and she will. She will give you her heart. You know, you have one job. One job. And for some of you, this is going to save the day right here. Are you ready? Yeah. Da, 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 da. Your one job is to make her number one. You have one job. Thank you, babe. Your one job, your number one job is to make her number one. Now, you might have a, two or three Christians in the room here who will say, I thought it was Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is my number one. By that criteria, it's Jesus, then oxygen, right? <laughs> then food. So she's like fifth. No, 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 no. I'm talking about between you, your stuff, what you want, and you're, you're trying to use her to help you get it. Between all that and her... She has to be number one. That's your one job. So you, you, can, you can get into scenarios in communication where you will find a moment where she will give you her thoughts, her emotions, her feelings, and it could happen at any time. You know, let's just paint a scenario here because there are two things that might happen in, in this situation. You know, first, you're not listening. Painting a scenario, okay? Okay. You guys are together talking about where you're going to have breakfast the next day or some other time. And you're thinking about, oh, yeah, we should go out for breakfast. This is great. You pick up the phone and you start Googling or yelping, whatever it is that you do. And you guys are talking about what you want to eat. Oh, maybe you should have pancakes. Maybe we should have this and that. And you guys, yeah, let's see. And then she goes like, oh, remember that one time we went to this place and we had a great date there. It was so great. And you're like, yeah, I do remember that. And you're thinking about the pancakes. And then she goes, we haven't had a date like that in a while. Spaghetti. We went on a different way. And what you should have done at that very moment is, okay, put your phone away and give her your full attention. But you were a rookie. You didn't know. You were not well versed in a woman's ability to go from pancakes to the meaning of life. In a couple of sentences. 
while you were still thinking about whether you want banana pancakes, chocolate chip pancakes, whether you want, you have to bring your syrup because you don't want high fructose syrup. <laughs> She's already gone through the menu, remembered the date, assessed how many dates you've had since, and figured out where are we going here? Where are we going? Is this moving anywhere? You know, are we going upward, downward? Are we the same? And you didn't listen, right? You didn't listen. That happened. The second thing you can do in a scenario like that, the same scenario, is that you hear it and immediately you want to fix it. Right? Just the, the, the hero complex. And let's be honest, every man has some kind of a hero complex where you want to walk in and you want to rescue and you want to solve the problem. And in it, you missed an opportunity to connect, an opportunity to listen to her heart and meet her where she is, to forget about the pancakes, assess the relationship with her and go where she is. But you're like, oh, she needs help. She's in a pit. I got to throw her a rope. She's drowning. Where's the life jacket? All right, she's lost. I got the map, babes. I, we, I can take you where you need to go. Here's a solution. And you can try to bring a, a solution right then and there. And in doing so, many times with this hero attitude, we make it about ourselves, right? We take away the opportunity to connect and we make it about ourselves because now we take what we see as a problem and we make it our own. And in that, there's conflict. Because why? It's a communication pitfall. The, the communication is not happening the way it should have been. And in that situation, you know, you can look at it as a problem. She says, we haven't had a date like that in a while. What you'll hear is, you're dropping the ball, man. You haven't, you haven't been thinking about us. So you can get defensive. You can say, oh, it's not that bad. Remember, back then we didn't have kids. It's not that bad. You know I've been busy at the office. Or you know you've been busy with your work. Like it goes both ways. It's your fault too. Or that's why I'm looking for it. I'm on the phone right now. We're going to have this date. Or if you're really sensitive. The last thing I need right now is another thing pressuring me. There's Cheerios in the pantry. relax all right recognize what's happening she's giving you her heart what you should do is just put your phone down you don't need to say anything just look at her hold her hand hug her if you can and say I know I miss you too I miss you too and you know what we need more more moments like that I'm there with you you're not in a different part of it the, like there's no disconnection because I feel it too and that's how you do it that's how you do it, guys. All right. So the other thing about communication is, so we give you four pitfalls, right? Another thing about communication is assessing the why. So you have to consider why are you saying what you're saying, right? Often, we've heard this before. We've heard it say, you know, we've heard it say, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. I would venture to say it's what, why, how, all of them, Right? Everything, everything in communication matters. And here's what we don't pay attention to. Everything you do communicates something. We are always communicating. There's no, like, we're communicating something. So even if you're not engaging, you're telling them something, right? If you are talking, you're telling them something. Your body is telling them something. Like, everything, we're always communicating in relationships. So we need to be aware of what we are communicating. We should be mindful of the what. We should be mindful of the how. We should be intentional. And when we're communicating, it is our responsibility as the communicator to get the message across, right? It is our responsibility, not them, to get us. Like, why don't you get me? Don't you know by now? No, it's not their responsibility. As a communicator, much like us here on Sundays, right? Every time we're preparing a message, we're thinking about our audience. We're thinking about, okay, um, how can I get what's in my heart to translate in a way that makes sense? In a way that they would understand what I mean. That in a way that is a clear language that God will get, you know, the, the glory. That like We're always thinking about how to communicate so that the audience would understand in the right way. It's the same in a marriage. 
it is your burden to communicate in a way that your partner understands what you're saying, to make it clear, to make sure that your speech is clear, to make sure that your language is positive and not negative, that you're not casting stones on your on the relationship or on the partner that you know that you are really evaluating what's coming out of your mouth um and if you're let's just say this if you're consistently misunderstood that means that you need to reevaluate how you communicate yeah yeah and the, the the real key thing is the why it really lies in the why simon scenic wrote an incredible business book called start with the why and it's one of the most watched TED Talks, uh, and it's for business. It applies for business, but this is a principle that applies in different areas too, especially in communication. You have to start with the why. Why am I communicating this? Why am I reacting the way I'm reacting? Why am I saying what I'm saying? Why, am I, why is the volume of my voice the way it is? Why is my face looking the way it is? Right? Why am I communicating? Am I trying to pers persuade my partner my way? Am I trying to use my persuasive powers in conversation to get them to my side? Am I being selfish? Why? Am I using guilt to manipulate? Am I using guilt, get, getting them to feel guilty about something they did so I can get what I want and manipulate? Am I trying to make them feel bad for me using pity? To manipulate, you know, and get what I want. If the why doesn't, ma the vi doesn't match the vision for your marriage or your relationship, if the why doesn't match where you want to go, then it's a bad why. If the why doesn't match your ultimate goal or the direction that you hope your relationship to go, it's a bad why. If your why is to inflict pain, I'm going to say something now here that he's going to feel the way I'm feeling or she's going to feel the way I'm feeling. Then you have to reevaluate how you communicate. If your why is for retribution, then you have to reevaluate how you communicate. If your why, you know, it's I'm going to put you in your place right now because this and this and that, and it doesn't match your vision for your relationship, you need to reevaluate how you communicate. You know, sometimes our mind can play tricks on us. Because your mind tells you, you need to release all the anger right now and dump all your frustration on that person right now. And that will be the solution. When the actual solution is forgiveness. When the actual solution is connection. What you're looking for is oneness. But you have all these emotions built in. And the way you go about it, just you go south before you go north. You go down before you go up. You know, it's much better for you to embrace a strategy where you don't have to apologize for what you did to get where you needed to get, right? Oh, I really wanted a hug, but sorry for throwing a pan at you. I really wanted you to say, I love you, sorry for wrecking your car, you know? Like, that got you there, but it wasn't really the best approach. So think about the vision for your marriage and think about how you communicate because the way you communicate will get you uh, uh, where you need to go. And it's much better to do it without having to regret what you did. Yeah, and on that note, if you're married and you guys have not discussed the vision for your marriage, let me encourage you. Discuss yeah. it. Yeah. Where do you want to be in 5, 10, 15, 20 years? What, what's the goal here? Right? Yeah. Because it's hard to go in the same direction when you don't have a direction. Yeah. Yeah, right? It's important to match the vision you have for your marriage with the why of your communication. Those two have to go hand in hand because here's the thing, and we're going to get into some practicals here for you, but here, here's what's important for you to understand. Most times, it's not that love is inexistent. It's that love is badly communicated. You love each other, but you're, it's, something is getting lost in translation. You know, the person is loving you in a way that you're not receiving it. And, and you're missing each other. You know, I have a, an example. Um, this was probably, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years ago. But I remember we were having, he said something. We were like 18, some, right? I don't know. Um, he said something or did something that really, like, at the moment threw me back, threw me off. And I, I remember getting really upset, like really upset inside. And I was like, okay. Wait a minute. 
So I remember I, uh, I don't even know if he was aware that it had just thrown me off, but I walked out of my apartment and we had a gym in the building and I went downstairs and I went to work out and I was thinking, why would he say that? Why would he say what he just said? And I started to do a backtracking. Like, why would he say that? Why am I angry? Why? Like, you know, you start to kind of take steps back. And by the end of my progression, I was like, that was dumb. They're like, he didn't mean that. I know his intentions. And I, like, the, the issue, like, was more inside me than it was in, in him. And so my encouragement to you is that when you know your why, when you know where you two are going, you begin to kind of go, this doesn't fit us. Whatever the argument, whatever the thought or the feeling, you can go back and say, and really evaluate and say, this doesn't fit us. So this is the off thing, not us. You know what I mean? This little thing is off, and you can clarify in a better way when your emotions are not just as high, too. Because a lot of, bit of emotions, a lot of pitfalls of emotions are reactions. Yeah. We react, we don't like communicate. We react, right? So we're like this flaming thing that just on the other partner instead of actually, wait, let me think about this. Let me consider. Let me think intentions. Let me think my heart. Let me think of, you know, and then communicate appropriately. Did you catch that? You got to write the note. No boo. No boo. Yeah, that's bad. Um, okay, so communicate for your mate. Communicate for your mate. I know a lot of you have probably heard of this, but Dr. Gary Chapman came up with something called the five love languages. And I'll preface it with saying that communication is more listening than talking. Right? Communication is more listening. It's really watching and listening for your spouse and figuring out how they feel loved, how they um, express themselves, how you can express yourself better or be, um, communicate better so that they understand. So today um, we're going to talk about these five love languages, but I want you to understand that the, these languages are about value. In communication, you want to always value your partner. Right? It's about giving them value and valuing them um, Making them feel valued, I should say. Making them feel valued. Um, and I, I, we like to compare it to a tank. So lo there's a love tank, right? Um, and so when you have been making deposits into that love tank, when you have been um, putting gas in it, right? If you have to extract, if you have to press on the gas in the car when the tank is full, the car will respond. If the tank is empty, you might get left on the side of the road right? It's the same thing with love. Love, you continually make deposits, and you make deposits, and you make deposits. And when the day comes that you have to take some out, you're not left negative. Yeah. You're not left empty, right? Because storms will come, and there will be days when you need your partner to just get it for you, because you can't explain it. You can't, like, it's, it, things are just rocky, and everything is up, and you don't really know how to you know, overcome it yet. And so when you have made enough deposits, especially when children come into the picture, yeah. most of you in the room know that when children come in, it's like just survive, right? Survival. It's survival mode. But if you've made enough deposits, your relationship can withstand that little short season of survival. Yeah. It can because you have enough love and you know how to respond to each other and you made enough investments to understand but when you're already in the negative, when that tank is already empty and you want to withdraw, there's nothing to take from. Yeah. And then you, this is where you get into, um, you know, relationship problems. So we're going to talk about the five love languages today. Um, the first one I'm going to address is acts of service because come on, wives and mamas in the room, how hot is a man doing dishes? Come on. <laughs> the guys didn't like it, but it's true. Any mom or wife will tell you that your husband with a vacuum in hand, whoo. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Of course I'm kidding. But acts of service is one love language, right? And so what acts of service is, is your partner put, placing your needs above his own and saying, I will serve. I will do this for you. It's not what I love to do. Obviously, I don't love to do dishes. Obviously, I don't love picking up, doing laundry. Obviously, I don't, you know what I mean? It's not about what you necessarily really enjoy doing. It's what, it's serving your spouse in a manner that helps them, mm -hmm. that shows that you value them, that you appreciate them. And that is by doing, physically doing things. So it's acts of serving. Um, 
And you, the, the, like for me, I mean, it makes a difference. I have a lot going on inside the house. And usually the division for us is I take care of what's inside. He takes care of things that are, you know, outside. And so, but when he steps into the house to do something, you know, it makes a world of difference for me. And it really does show that he values and appreciates me. Like when he takes the girls in the morning and lets me sleep in, can I just say amen? Amen. Okay, I feel loved. And like everybody, there's five different love languages, but that's for me one of those love languages that really make me feel appreciated. Yes. The second one that we want to address is quality time. And this is the give and take of the love relationship, right? It could be that you are someone who feels loved by acts of service, but your, your, your partner, your husband, your wife, their main love language is quality time. Nothing will make them feel as loved as just spending good quality time together. So you're about the doing, and I, I just did the dishes for you. Why do you want me to be with you? Like, I, you know, it, because that's how you receive love. But that person, the, the top of, on the top of their list is quality time. And I just want to say a couple things here on quality time. Quantity is not quality. It's very important, a distinction for those who, who uh, uh, quality time is their love language, language. Quality is the operative word. Quality is important. Binging on Netflix for three hours is not quality time. Right? Going for a walk for 30 minutes and sharing heart, telling them uh, how you feel and, and engaging in your emotions, that's quality time. Spending four hours in the same room could be just sharing the air, the oxygen. Quality time means you're with each other, the phone is away, the emails are not important, and you're spending time together. And on this uh, subject, let me just add this one thing here. Because uh, we, we heard this, this amazing talk on raising kids by Brene Brown uh, called Gifts of uh, Imperfect Parenting. And in it, she talks about the importance of families having playtime together. And in marriage and in relationships, this is crucial. Even if quality time is not your love language, you need time playing together. And the, the word play here means to do an activity where you don't see time pass. For you, it might be different. Like for somebody, uh, I know Maya, uh, my playtime with her is playing Wii. You know, just yesterday we were doing Wii Kart. Like for me, I'm looking at the clock, I'm thinking about what I want to do. So I do it for her, but for her, that's like time with dad. So I'm there doing every effort to be there present for her. But a pro an appropriate playtime for both of us would be to do something that neither of us sees the time pass, that we both thoroughly enjoy. Alini and I have those, those times where we're together and, you know, we, we engage in, in, in uh, things like reading or going out and you know, grabbing a good dinner. And it's quality time where we talk. We like talking, envisioning, imagining, uh, thinking together. And that's time that we pass. That's, Plug. Yeah. That's a place we can, hot sauna is one of those places. It's a great time. place. Just saying. Yes. <laughs> okay, words of affirmation. So words of affirmation is big in our house. Both JD and I um, are words people, so that's like at yeah. the top. You will notice when you, um, out of the, the gifts, you probably have two high ones. So this is um, big in our house, and we, so we have, from the beginning, from early in our marriage, been very careful and very intentional with our words. There were words we just don't use, and he's mentioned this before, like hate is a word that's not used in our house. It's just not okay. And so we are very intentional with our words. And there's a passage in scripture that I would love for you to write down and remember this because this applies, obviously this love language applies to your family, applies to your friends. Like you want to love people better, pay attention to what makes people yeah. feel loved, yeah. right? This is like how you love people better. Like you talk their language, you love them the way they receive love. And the passage is Proverbs 16, 24, which says, kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. And that is so true. Like a good word, a kind word, an encouragement, there's so much. There's so much. Like JD and I, we make every effort to compliment, to encourage, to uplift one another. Especially after services. I don't know, you'll notice that all of us, like one, one of us comes up on stage and the other one comes down, the other one immediately tells them something. I just want to tell you, we're always trying to say, hey, that was good. This was that. that was, like these little moments for us, we try to remember and kind of encourage. And it's not ever lie because your spouse will know. It is find something that you can encourage on. 
okay find something beautiful in them and the more you find the more you you you're looking for it the more you will find the more you're paying attention the more things you will find to uplift and encourage your mate and if that's their number one like that's their number one language find ways to be their number one fan Find ways. You should be the person that speaks the greatest things into their lives. You should be the person that finds the gold when they don't see it. You know, yeah. if that's your language, make an effort to pay even more attention to what's coming out of your mouth. Yeah. Number four is physical touch. Hey, there you go. I, I've, I've said it here before that my two top love languages are physical touch and words of affirmation. So basically give me a hug and say something good about me and I'm good for the day. All right, just, uh, just that. Uh, but this is something that it was, it, I had to understand from the beginning because this has always been my love language. You know, my parents were always hugging me and telling me how, how great uh, uh, we are as a family and, you know, the, the, the future that we had ahead of us. And for me, uh, we started the relationship and we got married young. I uh, was 19, she was 20. I had to you mention had to that. You had to say that, yeah. Yeah. Just four months, guys. Four months. And we are in the gap right now. So I have four months to remind her that we are at different ages right now. You know? Oh, I'm a millennial. She's not. I love you. That I gap is you. huge. You know what I'm saying? And for me, like, I, I came into the relationship and we shared words of affirmation. But physical touch, although is important for her and she doesn't you know, reject it, it's down in her list because it's, her, for her, it's words of affirmation and acts of service. So I'll give you an example that, because I had to understand how to communicate for my mate, right? This is, this is why we're sharing this with you. You got to understand that you need to communicate for your mate. And it's your job to make your love understood and communicate in a way that they can receive it. I would come home early in our marriage. We lived in a very small apartment. And I would take my shoes off, put them by the door. You see the recurring thing here? She mentioned shoes already. Very important. Left, left them by the door and would go and give her a hug and kiss. Not realizing that the shoe by the door was louder than my hug and my kiss. I could never comprehend that, that putting my shoes in the closet said, I love you louder than give you a hug. That to me was incomprehensible. It's not that hugging her doesn't say I love you, but the shoes, the shoes at the door. I'm going right out again. I'm leaving in 30 minutes. It doesn't matter. You know, the shoes at the door and, the, and what she would love for, uh, for the shoe. It's the, the place that she would love for the shoe not to be. It's the least favorite place for her for those shoes. So that was something that I needed to understand that, you know, acts of service spoke louder and communicated my love louder to her than the way that I receive love, which is physical touch. That was really important. Ooh. <laughs> and, and here's where some of us need to, um, need to go further. If your mate doesn't have physical touches the top of their, uh, uh, at the top of their list of love languages, and it is a top love language for you, you will easily feel unloved. Because the way you express love is by hugging, holding hands. And if, if you are always the one who needs to initiate that process, you will feel like, I, I, I want her to want to hug me. I want him to want to hug me. I don't want to tell him, like, let's hug right now. It just takes the romance out of it. Come on, man. Give me a hug here. No, it's important for you to communicate. You have to understand, hey, you know, I need affection. This is how I understand that you love me. Because you can get into, it can make the mistakes, the mistake of expecting uh, uh, your mate to discover and read you like a dashboard on a car. And know you when you want to hug, when you want to kiss, when you want, you know, to hold hands. And then you create resentment. You're pushing them away. And they don't even know. Don't even know why. Meanwhile, they are buying you things, bringing you food, getting you coffee, vacuuming the house. And you're like, whatever. You didn't hug me. You know what I'm saying? So this is something that we had to work through. And the only way we fixed it, because we did, 
is by communicating. I had to come forward and say, listen, this is what's missing in my life. I know you love me. I know that you're, you know, expressing your love to me. But I really sense it when we hug in the morning. Like just a hug. Before a cup of coffee, let's just hug under the sun and stay there for 30 I'm minutes, 30 romantic. seconds. You know what I'm saying? And just say, don't say a word. Just let me hear you breathe. You know? Uh, yeah, there you go. Okay, and the fifth love language is receiving gifts. Um, and for those of you that have this gift as a, as a language, it is not the monetary value that's important. It is the thought behind the gift yeah. that is important. I mean, every gift means, uh, has to mean you spend time <clears throat> during the day or whatever thinking about the person, which is why you got this thing. Right? There's a meaning. There's a conversation that was remembered. There was something you said that the person went, oh, this, you know, she or he would love this because of this and this and that. There's, it's not just the gift, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's the why of the gift, not just the ribbon. Right? There's yeah. a why in that gift that you're giving. So yeah. um, some people really feel loved with the, the, the card in the gift matters. Yeah. Right? The, uh, the, the remembering matters. And so it's not just purchasing a gift card and calling it a day. That's not love. It is the whys. The whys in those gifts, those gifts represent something. Bringing them something represents. Yeah, and before we close, because we're closing after this, I just want to share it with you something that we uh, dealt with. Uh, giving gifts is not high in our list. Of course, we like giving and receiving gifts. But when we got married, that's her mom's and her dad's love language. They give gifts. Because it's not high on my list, they will give me a gift, hand me the gift. And I will go like, oh, great. Thank you so much. So tell me, <laughs> how was your trip? And they would be like, oh, my God. <laughs> This is how you treat my heart? <laughs> so it works. The, these five love languages, you know, it works for the extended family too. I had to learn th that for me to receive their love well and to communicate, hey, listen, I appreciate what you have done for me, is to look at it and understand that they were giving me their heart, what they thought about me. They put some thought into this. They cared for me enough to buy me something, wrap it, bring it to me and say, here, we love you. And, and so every time they give me a gift, I, I make a big deal about it. For them. Not for me. For them. He's, can I just say, he sent a text message with everything that he loved about the item. I was yeah. like, whoa. They gave me a new backpack for the, uh, the computer. I bring everything there. And there was a 25 list item of things that I keep in that backpack. So if you need anything, I got it. <laughs> I, I want to give you homework, okay? Homework for you. So if you, if you have a pen, your phone, you're, you're welcome to bring it out right now. Uh, and I want you to write this down. number 5 the number 5 lovelanguages.com. www.5, not written 5, the number 5, then lovelanguages.com. And there's a quiz there. It's free. It takes about 10 minutes. For you to discover your love language. If you're married in the room, if you're getting ready for marriage, I want you to take that, okay? And at the bottom, you can print it or email. I want you to email it to yourself and email it to your mate, okay? Send it to them. And if you are married and you live together and you have a refrigerator or a mirror in your bathroom, I want you to do this, okay? This is the second part of your, uh, or the third part of your homework. Three-point homework. Take the survey. Second, send it to your person. Third, take that list and put it, their list, take their list and put it on your bathroom mirror or your refrigerator. And for the next 21 days, I want you to do at least once a day, I want you to love them in their love language. The top two love languages. If it's affirmation, if it's physical touch, if it's gift giving, don't buy a gift every day. You if can you make can, a gift. do it. But you, you can, can make. put a ribbon around the pancakes, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but you can, you know, appreciate them and love them in their love language. The top two love languages. Yeah. Can you do that? Yeah. You will see your relationships go to the next level. And let me just say, though, for some of you who have been like, I did that 10 years ago, they change. 
Yeah. They have changed. Like for me, it used to be quality time. But I th after our life has gotten so busy and, you know, things change, it, it became active services. It just did. I, I changed. Like we I mean, evolve. the love languages change. The love languages yeah. change. We evolve. And yeah. sometimes the needs evolve and our love evolves and all of that. So if you've taken it, all that to say, if you've taken it like 10 years ago, take it again. Yeah. <laughs> and you can take it on your phone, on your computer. Uh, it, it works in any platform. But do that. It, it, it'll improve your relationship. That's the practical element of today's message for you to improve your relationships and walk toward health because we want to communicate love in a way that we can be understood but also we want to love uh, the people around us properly and if you are single and you manage a team and you work in an environment do that encourage people around you to do that obviously be appropriate and you know don't be inappropriate about it but you know if you have people working for you and, and their love language is words of affirmation man tell them how much you appreciate them and then double it Okay, if, if it's gift giving, remember their birthdays and let them know they, that, you know, that, that you're thinking about them. This works in, in a, a myriad of applications. Yes. Are you glad you came to Connect Community this morning? Amen. Amen. Listen, we're going to get you.